Hey buddy, and this is the uh, basically the first tutorial on how to make the link clone. There are some issues in which by the time you see the second video, it'll be all cleared up. Um, we just use a animator in which we don't have to rig or animate the character. It, a website does it. Uh, if you've seen the Mixamo whatever video, it will be on the right hand side. You'll see it uh, suggest if you put your mouse over the little eye icon or I'll link it down below. But what that does is it auto rigs and then you can choose animations that, uh, that you want. We can fix the uh, the issue with the textures right here. I just wanted to show you guys how we could do this actually real quick on the coding section and then we'll get into the whole animation uh, the animation part. Uh, so this is uh, Copper Cube and we're also going to do a tutorial in Unity and inside of Construct2. So there will be a 2D section in case you just straight up don't want to do anything 3D. And then we're going to move this onto a device that looks similar to a uh, DS or a 3DS, whatever. But it runs Android. So you don't have to go over to, you know, uh, Nintendo and say, hey, I want an Indie license or whatever. But because that takes six months to a year, as I just learned. Um, but they called and they were like, hey, yeah, we want you to become an indie developer. So. I just have to get the dev kit. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to run this so we could see what it's going to look like and then I'll go through all the coding. But it's going to be 1024 by 720 anti-aliasing. Uh, let's see, okay. We're going to run it. So it runs like Link. So he has this walk animation, his idle animation, which is pretty like it's not high key. Uh, it's pretty low key, so he, he he's not doing anything crazy. If I hit E, we can slash. <laughs> and then we can go backwards. Uh, he can't jump, but we have to put it into a jumping animation. And then this is just one of the uh, characters that he's going to talk about. She is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I think it's a merchant in one of the, the DS or 3D. Uh, no, it's one of the, in the, one of the DS games. So we can talk to her, and she's just gonna say, "Hey, you know, this is a demo. Blah blah blah. Please visit my shop inside the town." So we're inside, like uh, I wouldn't say like his house, but I'd say like the palace or some sort of like large building. And then we can go outside, uh, which will be in the next tutorial. Is we're gonna build the outside. Air, um, area that he can run around in, uh, buy and sell stuff, and then defeat little monsters. So this will be a little micro action RPG game, just using Zelda as the um, the assets and everything. And then all the assets are going to be linked down below. If you heard of a website called Sprite Resource, they also have um, a subsite called Model Resources and Texture Resources and I think there's one more. Yeah, sound resources. So we can actually use the original link uh, music and everything. But uh, let's get to the code. So link itself is animated. And so I had to split up all of the animations and the animator. So we can just take, uh, it imports it under all. And then if you set the speed to 30, it's going to play it at 30. And then you have to cut it up. Now, one way around this is just to import it into Blender. So uh, you export it and mix them out under FBX, and then you'll convert it over to MS3D. Um, after you, okay, I'm gonna make a separate video on that. But basically, using Blender, we can then check all the frames because then Blender has a, a uh, an animation system and it will actually import other animation systems. So I know it's not the proper way to do it, but this is this as of yet, and he's I think the guy's working on it, Nico or whatever, uh, is going to import animated FBX models. So it'll be straight up like Unity. Um, to where we can import animation models. But after I've separated all the animated models, I set his default to idle. And then what I'll do is I will add a game character. So you can hit plus, game behaviors, game 
uh, actor, health, AI player, etc. And they say this is the player, says I'll do 100, movement speed 50. Um, then I'll just set his standard animations. And then his uh, all his other animations we can do a little bit later. Um, objects, person, controlled by keyboard. So we're going to do the keyboard, but this also allows us to use, so we say, uh, joysticks. So we can use that a little bit later because in the device that we're going to be using uh, to demo this, it has a joystick on it. When key is pressed, so when um, this is just some slight issues that you may have. So when key is pressed to something, so when you actually release the W key, you're going to go straight back to the idle animation. So that is just, uh, we're going to, just going to behaviors when uh, when clicked on this do something um, no here we go when key is pressed to do something and then you're gonna give the option do you want to press it or do you want to uh, when you're not pressing the key you you can do something it's gonna trigger something uh, when the animation of uh, set an animation of a animated scene node we're gonna click that and we're going to say, okay, we're going to select animated character one. I suggest that you always rename your character. So uh, I can't do it right now. Um, animation name is going to be an idle. We're going to set that to loop because I, I, he will always idle if he's not doing anything else. So we can also also rename. Uh, there we go. Animated mesh. I'm going to say link. And we can say link, and then we're gonna say uh, merchant. If I can spell. Whatever. It's raining outside, and I feel sleepy. Okay, so that's all. What these do is they either uh, set link to go back to the idle animations or when a uh, custom one when I hit E he's going to uh, go into slash mode and that's automatically going to just send us back into idle mode and with her what we're going to do is right now she's basically straight up on idle so she has talk and then she has idle. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to go up to her and when we press the talk button okay uh... hold on, I may have messed with something Idle, we select him. Do actions, idle, die. Oh, yeah, we don't need that. Okay, that one was just an extra one I made. Alright, so when we, when we go up to her, we're going to say a. Um, when we get so close to a character, so when we uh, select her, we're going to say behaviors on proximity so it says on 10 uh, let's size this up to a hundred so right there it's on the floor right there it's on her there we go now you can see it uh, let's see near to what we're gonna say a C node what C node select it link enters radius action we're gonna say we're, we're gonna actually change your animation so the seller our animation is going to be talk and she's gonna loop that done okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do basically copy that and we're gonna say on. I'm gonna say a hundred. 
120. See, well, actually what we're going to be doing is she's going to be in a conversation. So when we go up to her and press E or whatever other button um, that's going to be associated to talking to somebody, it's then going to trigger her talking. And then when we walk away, she's not going to talk again. Or when we in uh, in the conversation, it's not, and it's then going to stop the conversation. I'm just doing this real quick to show you guys what it could be like. Because um, that's going to be in part two. It's going to entail some other stuff. C node, select, sell, uh, link, action, say animation of a C node uh, seller to idle in loop. See, she's going to start talking to us. And then when we get out, let's make sure I did all the code right. It should be all right. Should be seller, idle, seller, talk. Okay, right. I'll look over it now, see if there's a bug. There she is talking, and then we're going to Yeah, she's still talking. Oh, enter radius. Duh, we need to fix it to leave radius. So she's gonna start talking and then she's gonna go straight back to idling. There we go. See, but what actually is going to happen is on proximity to something, it's going to trigger a basically a discussion between us and her. And then uh, when we leave said discussion, it's then going to say, okay, she's going to go back to idle. And then we can do, we can go back on to what we're going to do. So hopefully this tutorial helped you guys out. If you did, uh, hit a like and subscribe only if you want to, guys. Um, I'm going to be doing a pretty. I'm going to be doing a like Zelda Link video game. It's going to be kind of small. It's going to be kind of an adventure. You're basically going to just stop uh, bad guys around the village. You you can collect stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm I'm going to see if we can like use like bows and arrows and everything. So it's going to be kind of like an almost all everything you could imagine like Zelda video game that. Um, I'm then going to replace all the models with just other types and then make a little semi video game for the Google Play Store. Uh, and then we're going to get on to an FPS type video game for um, Windows devices. So uh, remember, guys, comment down below on what features that you would like to see in the Zelda type of game. I'm also doing the walkthrough of Zelda uh, Link Between the Worlds to kind of help us base our tutorial on so you're going to see uh, like monsters and stuff you'll have to shoot like turn on spheres and little traps and little puzzles so it's going to be pretty cool so hopefully see you in the, in the next episode guys and have a good one